Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the war room, and welcome to the show, and there is old Hugo about to uh, destroy Big Ben there. <laughs> anyway, um, before we start today's episode, I thought I'd share with you just a few little notes that I took down on the pros and cons, or positives and negatives, of large collections versus small collections. As you can see, I've added some quick notes, but if you can think of any to add to this, please do comment down below. Now, large collection, obviously the negatives, it's more expensive. I get a kind of anxiety about the, the collection size. It tends to be a bit wasteful. It's also difficult to transport. And also there's less chance of sentimental values with each watch. Positives, oh, obviously it's more fun. You can match any mood or outfit more likely because you've got more watches to choose from. There's more to buy and sell. And you do get, with a larger collection, you get less seller's remorse. So let's look at small collections. Well, the negatives, it's less fun might get a bit boring wearing the same watches all the time there's less to choose from when it comes to outfits also you might suffer from seller's remorse because you know if you scale down your collection you're going to regret some of those pieces, you know some of those pieces leaving uh let's look at the positives well you can have more concise quality now that is not associated with price i'm just saying I think of smaller collections are better quality. There's less overlap, all the rest of it. It's easier to transport. There's less anxiety because you're not concerned, you know, you're not thinking about giant collections all the time. It's also cheaper. This is not necessarily true if you have five Pateks, but generally it is cheaper than owning a ton of watches. And lastly, if you have less watches, the chances are each watch is going to gain more sentimental value. Please feel free to add your own down in the comments below. So without further ado, let's change perspectives now and get into today's video. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to today's show. Today, I'm gonna to be doing another episode of Wristwatch Talk. Where we're gonna be talking about finding that perfect collection. Now, uh, if my speech is a little bit slurred or I seem a bit drowsy, I do apologize, I'm quite hungover. From what I can only describe as a food hangover, <laughs> yesterday was Thanksgiving. Um, today, it was real struggle getting up. I don't think I've ever eaten uh, so much food <laughs> in my entire life. Yesterday was ridiculous. It was just a gluttonous feast. I mean, it was wonderful, but and it, it's good to do it every so often. But today, I'm I'm really <laughs> regretting eating and drinking so much. Uh, but we'll soldier on regardless. Uh, now, before I get into this video, I've got to do a wristwatch check, and it is of course my little Navi timer. Uh, I haven't worn it in quite a while, but I'm wearing it for a specific reason. It's the first year anniversary that I've had this watch. And I cannot believe, forgive the pun, how much time has flown past. Um, literally, it feels like yesterday I bought this. I'm still enamored, besotted, um, and in love with this watch. The love affair has not ended with the Navi Timer, and... I think it's one of the best, uh, in my opinion, one of the best watches I've ever bought because just the sheer amount of enjoyment I've got from it has been worth absolutely every penny. So the inspiration for today's video was from my good friend Klaus. Now Klaus Muller, uh, a German knife and watch channel, uh, I've always put it, he's, he's in my favourites, uh, fantastic channel. Now unfortunately some of it is in German and I don't speak a... Uh, uh, one word of German, but he has some fantastic watches. Now he posted this picture, I think it was on Instagram, or it might have been on Facebook, I can't remember, but he put two words in English, mission accomplished. Of course I was intrigued because as collectors, we, you, you all know, we're constantly searching, we're constantly obsessing, researching, watching videos, discussing, um, you know, much to our, our partner's annoyances, <laughs> our obsession, our, our lust, our, um, what it, what, what's the word? We have words like grail watches, right? 
the search for finding that ultimate collection. And so, of course, I was immediately intrigued to see how he went from this, well, from this to this. And I think we all aspire to have that perfect collection. And actually, something the other day I realized when talking about the Submariner, when you have a smaller, more concise collection like this, uh, which he's got five watches here, and I dream, I mean, I, only as I, I can only aspire to, have, to be as concise as this, but with the Navi, with the, not the Navi time, with the Submariner that I was talking about, the loves and loathes of the Submariner the other day, I realized that when you have a larger collection, you don't get as much of a sentimental attachment. It doesn't happen as much when you have a larger collection because the, the sentimental attachments or the me memories are divided amongst more watches. If you have a small collection like this, the chances are that every single watch of this, of this collection is going to have some kind of you know, Proustian, Madeleine moment attached to it. So that is a bit of a disadvantage. I'm not saying that my watches are not special. I've, I love all my watches and it's really, really hard. And I admire him tremendously how he got from this down to five. I mean, it really, I, it, it demonstrates a, a, quite, a, quite a ruthless, <laughs> you know, it must have been a heartbreaking thing to, to get rid of some of these pieces because he's got some beautiful, I mean, there's, I think there's a vintage is that a Gruen? I'm not, not quite sure, but there's a lot of vintage pieces. There's a vintage Omega Seamaster in there. Um, there's an Orient, uh, I think that's the Orient Ray 2 there. Um, and you can see how he's kind of consolidated into the final, the final five. So let's have a look at his final five. We have the Zin 5561M uh, with a stunning copper brown dial, very, very minimal, perfect example of a German made, uh, I guess it's a flight watch originally, really it, it could be a, any any kind of, you know, it's so minimal, it's it's almost Bauhaus in design, uh, but it's not, it, it is an aviation watch with the hold case, very tooly, minimal, love it. Then, we, then he has the Omega uh, ceramic Seamaster, the, the newer 300 with that striking blue. Third, he has the Rolex Oyster Perpetual, the newer one uh, with a stunning slate grey sunburst dial with the little accents of blue. He loves his colour, Klaus. I really like it. Fourth, his most classy watch, in my opinion, he has the Nomos Orion uh, with the sub seconds there, gold tone markers, applied markers, white face. Uh, with the date, this is uh, these are all automatics, obviously. By the way, that is Bauhaus. Absolutely, that watch is pure class. I've reviewed the no date version, which, in my opinion, is, in my opinion, I prefer it. But I, you know, I can see he to differentiate between the Rolex. You know, I can see why he went for the dates, blued hands. I presume they're blued hands. My printout is a little little um, bad quality but anyway an interesting choice and probably the most different is the Mido Commander 2 this is a chronometer certified another automatic day date complication striking blue dial kind of a dressy but the name suggests military an interesting watch this is a brand I've never experienced so I really can't say much about it but it does look dashing with that lovely red and blue the red second hands and the and the blue Gorgeous. I mean, what a final lineup. I really admire that he's he's been able to get to that. And it's made me think, you know, I would love, I'd love to have this. My problem is, is that obviously I have a channel, you know, on the one hand I collect for myself, on the other hand I collect pieces I want to share and film and, and, and do jewels with and compare to other watches. So. I have a bit of the conflict there, but I do want to get to that kind of um, utopian, <laughs> uh, no, maybe that's not the right word, but that, that kind of, that, that zen-like state of like, yeah, that's it, you know, can I ever do it? I don't know, I don't know, but I certainly want to. The problem is, is obviously I love too many watches. I have a huge emotional attachment to too many watches. I just love these things, you know, I can't help it. Um, however, anyway, today I wanted to discuss 
uh, my own, indulge in my own uh, short term, long term, medium term, that's the wrong order, sorry. Short term, medium term and long term goals. Now my long term goal is unchanged. Uh, it's the Langens on uh, Perpetual Calendar. Uh, I've done videos discussing it. That's unchanged. We're talking a decade. That's why it's the long term, right? Now my medium term has changed. Let me just let me just find it. Now you guys know I've been obsessing about the Rolex Explorer, but since then, with the arrival of the Tudor, the Pinky, the little Tudor uh, Submariner that I reviewed the other day. I've fallen in love with pink dials. There's not enough watches with pink dials. And I found the Rolex Datejust. This is the reference 116200 with a salmon pink dial with Roman numerals. I'll, I'll, add a, I'll add a picture. Jubilee bracelet, which you guys know I love. And that's kind of taken my attention away from the Rolex Explorer. The Rolex Explorer is very understated, but um, I, I do like the date of this particular piece. I, I love date just. I've had four, no, three of them. Um, I've always missed it. And I could see this being in my final, if I did have a final five, it's different. I love the salmon pink. This is definitely going in my final five. If I, if I ever get to there, I probably realistically, it's looking like final seven, you know? Um, so I don't want blue. Uh, my Submariner is definitely going in there, so that's black dials covered, and also that's the, the, the divers. Inside, of course, we have the 3135 movement, which I absolutely love. One of my favorite Rolex movements, so it's it's the newer one with the parachrome hairspring. It's same as in the Subby, so I know how that goes. I just think it's an ex incredibly robust watch. It will serve me until uh, the Lange comes along, which is going to be, you know, it's going to be donkeys until I get the Lange because I mean, that is a lot of money. I'm going to have to, you know, it's the price of a house. Another thing I have been considering is JLC and, you know, I, I have yet to try the, the, the smaller midsize, I think it's a midsize version of the Reverso. I do want a, a JLC. Uh, however, Dress watches, and this is what I love about the Datejust, is that I do end up wearing the Datejust more. It has still got that sporty, robust feel to it. Dress watches, with the exception of my little moon phase, the, the Oris moon phase, I, I wear them at home, but I don't wear them enough to justify getting a reversal. Don't get me wrong, I would love a, my own Cartier tank, possibly a gold one even, but I think I'll buy that for my wife, she can enjoy it and I can borrow it every so often, right? So I got Cartier sorted. I have been thinking about JLC, it is a family tradition. I did share my uncle's JLC, beautiful minimalist piece. I'll share a picture. Now this I think was given to him by the Aga Khan. Somebody in my family, somebody in my uncle's family, I forget who, married into that family. So. The, hence why it was given to my uncle. But anyway, I love JLC because it is a way of getting into kind of hot horology without the price tag. It's the watchmakers, watchmakers. Their pedigree in watchmaking is so rich and respected. I mean, they've developed over 1,200 of their own calibers. They have the, the memo box, the reversal, the, oh, the, the list of their achievements is endless. However, when am I going to wear the reversal? I just don't I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sporty guy, I'm a sporty guy, you know? By the time I saved up for my Lange, I'm gonna be old and decrepit and old and fat like Marlon Brando, you know? So I don't plan on moving very much. That's when I'm gonna have a, a, an expensive dress watch, right? Now, it's not my lifestyle. I'm, I'm walking a dog, I'm running about, you know, I like, I like the sporty aesthetic. So I had a brainwave and I had a really good idea. You guys know I collect clocks as well. I have a, a, some Charles Fro I've got to do a video. The thing is, most of my clock collections back in the UK, I did inherit my grandfather's uh, Louis XIV, beautiful Ormolu gold gilded clock. Uh, I since sold that to some Russian friends in London. Um, it just, it needed to be restored. And also it's just, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's a ridiculous clock. I mean, where do I keep this thing? Um, so I've, I've bought, I did actually end up buying a little Jung Hands Art Deco, no, 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 sorry, 
a Bauhaus piece and another Jung Hens Art Deco piece as well. I have quite a few Art Deco clocks. So I was thought, well, that would be an excellent way to add a Juju Le Coultre to my collection, to a Hort Horology piece, but something I can still enjoy, but I don't have to wear. And that is, of course, the Atmos clock. Now this, if you're not familiar with the Atmos clock, basically it's powered by atmospheric changes. Don't ask me how it works. I always, you know, God knows, uh, the, the science behind it would probably give me a headache. It's powered by atmospheric changes in the atmosphere, right? Atmos, obviously. It runs uh, almost forever, uh, perpetually, right? I mean, obviously you have to kind of uh, service it and maintain it every so often but it just it just runs and it's a thing I can put you know I might put it on my shelves over here or even possibly on my table here and I, I can look at it every day I can enjoy it I can get the pleasure I want from the horological side of it if I buy one I'll, I'll review it obviously but I can enjoy a hor horology piece without taking wrist time away from my sports pieces. So I'm definitely gonna get an Atmos clock at some point. There is a moon phase version as well, but I think it's frightfully expensive. I think I'm just gonna go with the gold, yellow gold, uh, the brass, I think it's brass, I, I'm not even sure, but I'll probably go with the the more, dec with the deco dial, stunning, absolutely pure class. They're not actually that expensive on the used market so that's what I'm gonna do so I'll still get a JLC but without taking precious space away from my final lineup which I think is is what I ultimately want to do and I'm gonna have to separate watches I buy for the channel and my own personal collection I really really want to get to down to about five I don't think so probably seven now short-term goals reminded a bit by um, Klaus's lineup he has the Nomos and a Zin. Uh, mind I'm not sure, I think they're Swiss. I might be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. But he has two German watches. He's German, obviously. I do want to add a German watch to my final lineup. Most likely a Zin, possibly a 903, but then I'd be overlapping with this. Um, I, I'm not sure. Maybe a Nomos, you know, something with an in-house movement. Uh, their world timer is the blue one, absolutely gorgeous. So this is something I, I've got to deliberate and ponder in the future. But anyway, guys, uh, please do suggest your nominations for, for Nomos and Zin watches you think I should get because I, I don't even know where to begin. But I, I think it is imperative. I have, you know, a Japanese piece, a German piece, and of course, you know, well, Rolex and Amigas, they're all they're Swiss, of course. Germany has one of the richest uh, traditions of watchmaking. I mean, they were the first to make wrist watches. In fact, actually, that reminds me, I'm going to be doing a history of wrist watches video, part two to the, you know, the horology lead up video that I did last year. So that that is coming the um, possibly next year. That's coming next year. And then, of course, I've got to clean up with my own collection. I've got to let some pieces go. If I get a date just with the pink dial, obviously I'm going to sell the, the Tudor Submariner, the pinky. I'm going to have to let some Seikos go. Definitely not the Seiko SKX. That's forever being in my collection. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave it there. And before I wrap it on far too long, uh, please do share your short-term medium term and long term goals in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys are uh, considering as well. Got a lot of really cool stuff uh, coming up. We're gonna be looking at some more Hort Horology timepieces. We're gonna be looking at AP. We're gonna be looking at Patek. Also, some fantastic offerings from some micro brands. Very, very exciting. Uh, all of that's coming up very soon, so stay tuned. Uh, don't forget to add your thoughts, queries, opinions, comments, all the rest of it down below in the comments. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. I'm, I'm going to go and lie down. I'm still very, very much hungover. I hope you all had a fantastic Thanksgiving. Anyway, guys, I'll definitely catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.